Do you remember this guy? Well, this is him now. And if you're interested in how this transition happened, uh, I bet you should stick with me today because we are going to do the elephant house. Yes, it is the time to rip away the old elephant house in Yosemite Valley and build a brand new one. So if you guys are interested in that, please make sure to stick with me throughout the entire video because in the video we are not going to talk about only about the, the building of this, but we're also going to talk about what are the final steps of Yosemite. Um, so I do highly recommend, if you like the prog uh, this, this, this progress over here, if you like the series, if you like my content, um, it is very valuable to stick with me throughout the video today. Now, there are a lot of things I changed and um, I will also have a very nice transition at the end of the video, like with a couple of screenshots that, you know, uh, go very nicely um, over each other because I had a very nice um, kind of way of doing this. I put down some cameras that, you know, kind of had the, the right angle. So I really loved it. Now, one thing I needed to tell you guys in particular is the fact that this over here, this this building um, really was something that annoyed me for quite a while now. I said a couple of episodes ago I will not change it, but apparently that was a lie. <laughs> um, but I did also lie to myself. Now, the reason why was that I thought I didn't have the energy or the, the willingness uh, to do this, but at the end of the day, it just kind of itched so much that I was like, okay, I have to change it. And basically, the main reason for that is that the lady designer um, started the conversation basically about the uh, habitat for elephants uh, quite a while ago. We we're talking about the artist zoo in uh, Amsterdam, is it? I believe in the Netherlands, which uh, have a very similar habitat to uh, the habitat is not similar, but this idea over here with the sunken down uh, pathway leading through the habitat um, is an idea that they kind of did over there. And I love the design so much that I uh, took this as an inspiration and made this myself. But that wasn't the only uh, thing I changed. As you can see over here, I opened up one of the, you know, old viewing areas uh, to become effectively a new connection to the park. And there is a brand new bridge of Yosemite. Now we do have uh, two main bridges now crossing over, which is one of the main things I wanted to change. I have talked about this um, very often indeed, because I told you guys that I thought it was very important um, to obviously always have it in mind, always have in mind um, that there is a certain guest flow you have to consider. And this guest flow um, has to be recognized uh, by, you know, by you <laughs> um, and also by the people so that there is a good guest flow given. But yeah, so that was very important and I thought I want to do this. However, I did not want to go to this kind of modern-esque design that the artist zoo in Amsterdam has, but it actually should be very Yosemite-ish. Now what I did is also, and this is the second thing that annoyed me about this area, was mainly that I think it just really didn't fit the Yosemite style. It wasn't as bad as the uh, South American domes, but I most definitely don't touch them, so don't think about this, don't even remotely think about this. But I thought it was time to change it, and I found some very good inspiration. Unfortunately, that's going to be in the next episode. Uh, just a little tease over here, but uh, don't don't you worry, it's not going to be far away. I'm almost done with this entire thing. But again, as I promised, uh, we will talk about this now. We will now talk about what is going to happen with Yosemite and then the end of the video, the rest of the video, it's all going to be time lapse today, is going to be spent on this very habitat over here because there's a lot of thoughts that went into it. But first of all, we have to talk about what is the focus for the last episodes of Yosemite? And this time around, um, you can believe me that this is going to be the end of Yosemite, uh, simply because the game keeps crashing, the, ge the FPS are getting into an area which is really not enjoyable anymore, and the zoo is really done. There is not that much more you can do with it. Um, it always depends on the next DLCs that come, but uh, obviously there is really not that much I can um, I have to put into here, except maybe some avian uh, stuff or uh, the full aquatic things. If they might come, we might go back, but this is not going to be a full kind of comeback then, but it will be um, putting all the implied habitats into actual habitats, but I'm not going to change anything major anymore. Um, but there are a couple of little things we have to finish off. So as you can imagine, the elephant area has to be fully finished. Uh, so this is what we are going to do in this and the next episode which is going to be massive. The next episode is going to be even better than this one. Uh, I know it's a, it's a pretty major claim, but trust me, it's actually true. Now, 
the next step afterwards is finishing the African penguin habitat. There's like a little bit over there, uh, might not fill an entire episode. We will make the connection by the lion habitat um, as a better one. We will go to the doll sheep and, uh, you know, refurbish a couple little things there. And there is one last little bit uh, towards the restaurant that is located next to the South American domes. That is all of it. And I guess if I'm not completely wrong with my estimation, that might actually be two more episodes from this one because the other little things, they all don't really take that much time. It's just like sitting down for like two hours and finishing off the stuff. Um, and then I have planned a couple of new... Well, well, not new, but I have uh, planned a couple of nice things for the tour uh, because the tour is going to be split into three parts, I can already tell you, because otherwise it is just not doable. It is absolutely not doable, uh, simply because the, the, the zoo is so big that it and also because of so many things to, to see, you can't really focus. So I'm going to divide this into three parts. The first part is going to be the... Um, uh, the main part of the zoo, so when you enter the zoo and then you've got the sequoia area and uh, the sequoia area and uh, the bison habitat, so those two things frame it, uh, the cat, big cat area, and uh, we're not going to cross the river quite then. In the next one, we are then going to enjoy our time in the South American area and also with the wolves and, you know, all these kind of things with the grizzly bear project, all these kind of little things um, and the aquatic house. This is going to be in the second one. And the third one is going to be the other side of the zoo, including the reindeer area, the African area, the Australian area, and obviously this brand new um, wetlands trail. So this is the roadmap, I should say, for uh, A, the next episodes, and B, the tour. And it's time now to talk about this habitat. As I said, I took inspiration from the zoo in Amsterdam, uh, simply because they have this lovely architectural solution for seeing the elephants up close without being actually too close to them, which I believe is a very good thing to do. And the next bit is that I took a lot of inspiration from various modern uh, habitats of elephants that I've seen. So, for example, the one in the Zurich Zoo, um, the one in the Berlin Zoo, like a lot, lot of uh, nice ideas. And uh, I think it wasn't, I think it wasn't Berlin. It was Leipzig, I guess. But yeah, um, there were a lot of inspiration I took from these. Uh, how they, how they managed to still have it look good despite the problem that these animals are rather destructive when it comes to foliage. So whatever type of foliage they can reach, they will pull it down, uh, knock it over and uh, A, eat it or B, destroy it. Um, and, you know, if you're not careful enough, they might even eat poisonous uh, food in the way that they eat poisonous leaves from plants they don't know. They don't really care about that. They just grab it and there you go. So you have to make sure that they can't reach these things. But I still wanted to make this habitat feel Yosemite-ish. And by Yosemite-ish, I obviously mean it should definitely look like Yosemite Valley and not like a modern zoo uh, habitat as in the Zurich Zoo, for example. As much as I love the Zurich Zoo uh, habitat and I would love to rebuild that just plainly because it's just so good, I don't see the reason to do that because it just does not fit Yosemite. But I'm also trying to utilize a couple of old tricks from uh, elephant habitats. This is one of those. Uh, I'm using a pretty easy way of making a little ditch that separates the elephant from uh, the guest area and the main part about this is it looks super natural it looks uh, it looks super you know included into the zoo and the elephant still wouldn't go down there because you know that edge is just too steep for them so they just basically don't do it but they get very up close and I could even reach over to the guest with the trunk um, a little nice trick over here by the way I used the mud pieces from the African pack, I guess it is, and you can, or is it, I don't know if it's African pack, I think they just brought these pieces, these free pieces with the African DLC, but it was in the free update, because I think these are the Indian mud pieces, whatever, or the base game African mud pieces, something like that. Um, however, uh, I did this in a way that this looks nice, and then as you can see over here, um, I put these pillars down um, to achieve basically the exact same effect that the elephants won't go closer the good bit about elephants is that they are pretty heavy heavyweight animals and they move uh, very uh, how to i'm not even sure how to you know get, put that in words they move very slowly but very distinct um, but there's a way to make sure that they don't cross certain areas very easily by putting down 
like these pillars or like fences and stuff they just don't go over that because they know they potentially could hurt themselves because they're so heavy and so clumsy sometimes uh, that they wouldn't do it so it's pretty easy to make them uh, stay in one area however i don't want them to stay in one area particularly over here so what i did is i built a bridge that crosses over and let me tell you i needed to change that bridge a million bazillion times that i haven't included so you will only see the wonderful build over here but this bridge is uh version 1 and I think it was version 112 that finally worked um, yeah so the elephants have a super 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 crazy traversal area requirement it's insane um, not only the space required between both sides but also the angle is pretty nasty because they really can't climb up a steep angle whatsoever so I needed to change the bridge uh, profile quite dramatically make it way wider make it even less um, inclined as I have it right now and it is already very subtly inclined so it's not really that major incline over here uh, but yeah so I was also in um, you know including a lot of fences and stuff from all over Yosemite now the reason why I did this is because I thought to make it really look like Yosemite I should definitely use the pieces and stuff that is already included in Yosemite and why not do this because I mean I have done all these things in the past for a good reason um, so I, I thought it's just very consequent to make sure that this all works. You've also seen me putting down the beaver the beaver enrichment item. For whatever reason, it seems to work with the elephant. I'm not sure if they just go in there and take a bath or if they even interact with the, uh, like with the like wooden trunks and stuff, what is in there, I don't know. But, you know, that would be awesome if they would interact with these because, I mean, the beavers do it, but I'm not sure if the elephant would take one of those in there and you know with their trunks and then just throw them around and whatnot uh, that would be awesome by the way and now we come to as i said these planters that i wanted to put into the habitat too to make sure that we have something to look at something nice looking at the same time as having something that is uh, functional as a planter and makes sure that the elephants can't reach the plants that we put into and I, I can already tell you that there's just some very very simple foliage in there just making sure that there's nothing uh, particular that they can rip apart so making really sure that even though if they would stick their little nasty trunks in there they can't really destroy too much or grab too much so that's the basic idea we will also have some fences around it so make sure that they really don't get into this but I, I you know I just wanted to make it look a bit more a bit more lush and so this is why I made these planters uh, as kind of something that gives us the idea and the chance to yeah make make some more plants i think this is the thing just to change the sidelines and stuff a bit more because otherwise it just looks so empty and i think the emptiness was one of the main reasons why i disliked the first iteration of the elephant habitat so so much and also the way how they interacted with the river wasn't really great and there's a huge change to how they interact with the river now as well um, because it is now a very a very focused area which has the bridge as a separation and the connection to the lion habitat as a second separation and there are some fences in the water that actually make sense uh, so a lot of things that really make sense now uh, and the elephants have a wonderful big area to enjoy so that's definitely a major major improvement over the old area as you can see and architecturally I think it's one of my coolest habitats I've done it's the most interesting to look at and the most intriguing when it comes to where the elephants can go so they have a lot of a lot of places to go a lot of chances to you know explore the habitat and I think these these are the things that I really enjoy doing um, in the meantime like I really I think I upped my game quite a lot in terms of habitat design overall not just the looks of it I think the looks of it was something I was quite quite comfortable with from the very beginning simply because of all the knowledge from uh, Planet Coaster but obviously habitat design is very very different from how you would lay out an area for Planet Coaster for example and for a coaster so there are a lot of different rules that need to apply um, simply because you want to have it also interesting for the animals but also for the guest and not you know a roller coaster doesn't really care <laughs> how the environment looks, you know, it's just there. It doesn't care if it's uh, embedded into a Viking village or if it's basically in a sci-fi space station. It doesn't care about that. But animals actually, 
you know, they care about where they move and stuff. So that's one of the main reasons. Yeah, with those little gates over here, actually massive gates, I should say, it's the end of the time lapse. And there's going to be like a wonderful transition shot now for you to see the changes in this episode. But again, little teaser, make sure to watch the next episode. If you haven't seen the last episode, by the way, I highly recommend to click the top right card now because this is very important. Uh, I think YouTube has messed up the video, so not really many people saw that. If you haven't seen the last episode, make sure to click it now, watch it, and then watch something else. And we see each other in the next episode. Enjoy your time and goodbye.